Okay. So it's been over a year and a half since I've done the last podcast. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that other than I've been busy doing a lot of other stuff. Um, I sat down today with my good friend, John Joseph. He was the head lead singer of the Cro-Mags and triathlete, uh, spokesperson for the vegan lifestyle in general, like cultural figure in New York City, Lower East Side. So a lot of you guys are, are familiar with his music and people that are closer to him know about all the other things that he's got his hands in and he's just a really amazing incredibly strong creative person and i was really really happy to be able to sit down with him today so i hope you enjoy it and look forward to having a lot more from uh, us in the future this is invisible radio 2016 all right we're here live with john joseph chromag um evolution of a chromag uh what's up dude Speaking of the mic. What's going on, Troy? <laughs> What's going on, dude? How are you? Good, man. It's good. Uh, it's good to finally get you on here. Um, Holy shit! Broke down in the tunnel on your motorcycle. Uh, <laughs> and I can't swim. Here yeah, we man, are. Yeah, it, like it was one thing after another. February 2016. Totally. Um, so let's just get started. Like I, most people, get, tell me something about yourself. Um, you know what? Uh, how you became the person that you are now and i mean most people know you from your music and then people that would follow that route would be familiar with your writing and your your work in like the fitness world so tell me about about yourself so people that don't know who you are um where do i start <laughs> childhood oh I got, I got a list here, see, yeah, I, was like, so, I didn't, I didn't want to know, miss out you know, on all these stuff. I wrote uh, The Evolution of a cro Magnon, I guess, came out the end of 2007, 2008, and kind of chron- chronicled my... Uh, that would broke down, like, your the early New York, your, yeah. your... I saw, I've seen you do, I saw you do that, uh, that live reading at the Riddington, that place, right, across from the bridge. Oh, yeah, that was... Um, a couple years ago. Powerhouse was, Books. Okay. Yeah. So, tell me about coming up in the. Uh, what? When did you start? You are where? Where? What? Where in the New York area did you grow up? Uh, well, I was born in Queens, mm-hmm. uh, Elmhurst General, mm-hmm. but uh, my mom um, lived on the Upper East Side, okay. the Irish area up there, with with the family, and then married my father, who was from Astoria. Irish then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Irish boxer. Right. And uh, basically was not a nice person. So because of it, you know, basically he almost, you know, beat my mom to death. Okay. Little cajole. Like, I mean. Just it sounds like, like a very, you know, like. Yeah, it was extreme. Archetypal raging bull type yeah. of relationship. I mean, just a maniac. And uh, so she. Descended into my father was an alcoholic boxer as well, yeah. which is a, it's a lot of that going around. Yeah, well, she uh descended into like just taking you know medications mm-hmm. and stuff like that and wasn't taking care of us after he left, so she was stuck with three kids. And then uh, one night he like broke in and beat her, you know, unconscious. And then we got uh taken out of the house and put in. Into foster care. Okay. And the first house we went into was real nice, these people, uh, the Sheridans in Brooklyn. And then the uh, father, or the mother got cancer, so they had to take us out of there after a year. And then they put us in like a a horrible uh, foster home in Long Island. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was there for like six years. That's the part that I I think, I think that was the part that I walked in on in the reading of uh, you watching Soul Train during that time period. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, my mom, it's tough for her. She comes to the, to, she came to that reading. Was that at the Delancey, wasn't it? By That's the what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Delancey. Okay, because I had another On book reading. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one uh, my mother came to. And it's hard. I don't even like inviting her to these places. Oh, I'm sure it's... Because, uh, like, she was crying when right. she hears me you know, uh, reading about what I went through, but she's a very strong person, and uh, I had a lot of resentment against her because she left mm-hmm. us in this home, um, you know, for six, almost seven years. We were being abused every way 
imaginable. You know, like I said, gotcha. I, I detailed it in the book, and uh, you know, um, and I had a lot of resentment against her because her boyfriend basically didn't want us around, but I didn't understand the whole full aspect of why she couldn't take us until later because, you know, my father actually raped her and that's how mm -hmm. I was conceived. And my, I mean, it's just the fucking so it was most a, insane story Yeah, it was uh, that the Village Voice, like when they did the write-up and gave me the cover, at first they were accused, they were saying, oh, you made this up, there's no way. And then when I gave him all the uh, contacts... You know, to verify everything, that's when I ended up getting the cover. Was that around when that other book came out, where it ended up being almost all fabricated, the thousand little pieces or something, it, it, something yeah, like it, that? Yeah, it so was like, exactly they, they were hyper. Yeah, James vigilant. Fry. Yeah. So they were like, no, he actually met with me because he read the book and said, you know, I'd like to meet with you and we want to do a little story on your book. Gotcha. So when I showed up at Kate's Joint, which was this vegetarian I restaurant, that place. he slid the fucking book across the table and he goes dude get the fuck out of here and it was rob her villa this dude and i was like what do you mean get the fuck he's like D you made this up because this is when all there was like another fake memoir too about some white chick being a gangbanger and turned out to be lies and so i gave him all, you know all the all the numbers he needed to contact so he called my mother she didn't even know i wrote the book yet you know because it had just come out and she's like called me up and saying, oh, I just got a call from the somebody from the newspaper. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, you know, after that, you know, uh, they gave me the cover of the Village Voice, right. the, the brutal life and times of, of John Joseph, the blood clot diary. <laughs> you know, but, it, you know, people ask me all the time, and, and, and I say, you know, I would never trade anything uh, one moment of all the hell I went through because, it, you know, true character is is uh, revealed and carved out of pressure Agreed. that you go through in your life. And people that don't go through shit, I don't, you know... You yeah, know, they, they don't like, have the same perspective. Like, what we were saying about with you, your mother coming to your reading and um, crying. Yeah. In interviews I've done and stuff, when you kind of reflect on hard times in your life... But you're reflecting on them as like kind of a badge of honor, like you made through this. Your parents kind of just see that as them failing somehow. She did, you, you know. know so she even it's... told me like last year, she, you know, because we got tight after the book came out. Like it was a period of time, even in the early punk rock days, and when I was in the Navy after I got out of jail, I did almost two years mm -hmm. that I wouldn't even talk to her, and um, I, you know, like I said, I had a lot of resentment and what I went through. Like no one even knew all the level of the abuse right. i never even ever talked about what happened in in this foster home with you know the sexual abuse whatever that you know that was done to us because it was just a part of my life that i tried to bury and then sure. i realized after the drug addiction and everything else that i went through that it was like this open wound that if i didn't address it was really gonna fuck me up in this lifetime so um I think also the times have changed to where people are kind of more, you know, it, it's people are more likely to want to associate the uh, thing, things that have happened to them negatively with their their personalities an adult now, where it, it was just of that generation where you just kind of just blocked it out and just got on with your shit. Yeah, it you was know, like it this. It, it wasn't all this like wearing your heart victim. on your sleeve. Yeah, there wasn't the same kind of bullshit. victimology. And, and, and you know, I gotta tell you, when the book came out, I'm not gonna mention any names, but I got fucking a couple of dozen emails of people that are very well known that had similar shit happen to them oh, and sure. be like, yo, man, it took a lot of fucking guts to say what you said. Well, and I was like, you know what? I never had any therapy. I happened to be working on a film script and that's how this shit, I just woke up one night and I just broke down crying because I had a dream. We were, I was using a lot of the shit that happened to me for this character in the film. It was in, so it just brought about all this shit, and I just right. woke up one day, and then my writing part one night, and my writing partner was like, "Look, you know, you you got to write this book. It's gonna be, 
you know, like therapeutic for you. And then I just started writing pages and then pages. And then six years later, there, you know, there was the book. Well, any, any guy that has been dated women in New York knows how, like, much damaged people are out there. Oh. Because, and, and just how, uh, how, how much you hear the same stories over yeah. and over again. Like, you, you, stuff that you, when you're, when you're just isolated, kind of like living in the suburbs or whatever, and you, you know, you maybe dated two or three girls, but like, you, you're, you're in New York, and then you start seeing kind of the same cycle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Patterns. Like, the same patterns, you know? And it's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you realize that like this kind of stuff is actually more the, the, it's more the rule prevalent than than, than the exception. You know, yeah. And in a lot, in, I mean, you know, for me, it was like that's why I called the book the evolution of a Cro-Magnon because it's like, you know, it's been an evolving process uh, over the years of of working on myself, and and, right. and I still am. I mean. You know, if you look at all the shit, man, joining the Navy, going AWOL, being, on, you know, doing all this, the Cro-Mags and blood clot and being with the bad brain. I mean, it's just like, right. when you put, uh, like, when she told me to write the book and I actually got a cork board and I started doing the chapter breakdowns and I would just write down all the events, you know, that happened, I was just like, holy fucking shit. Like, dude, this yeah, is... it makes it all like, real. Like, I, I, you know, I never really tried to be narcissistic and look at like what a fucking amazing life I, you know right. but it's like I was like yo this is some crazy shit like the crack fucking almost getting killed like several times like well during that time period it also Lower East Side was fucking insane, insane. it was just insane and insane. I was out there fucking right down the block two yeah. blocks from here by, yeah. by, by fucking Pitt Street Projects robbing motherfuckers like right. strong arm robbing I, I mean I was an insane uh crackhead like mm -hmm. you know they had a i didn't even find out till later I, I ran into this puerto rican dude i knew he's like yo that motherfuckers had a kos like if they saw you to shoot you right like you know because you was fucking going around you know just strong arm robbing people yeah. and then me and this other cat robbed this Colombian dude, got him in our car, turned, you know, it turned well, out he had a gun on him. And in, uh, yeah, in the city, like, you'll meet guys that grew up in this, like, we, we all know people, I moved here from California in 99, but I met guys that had lived in this neighborhood when it was still really hot. And uh, they, you know, they'd have their shit together, but they're like, oh yeah, we used to, you know, I robbed a drug dealer in this building here, or I used to go cop over here, yeah. you know, and it, this street particular was oh, completely this shit different was yeah. fucking i mean orchard was always kind of like the clothing the russian yeah. mob had all yeah. their little leather shops and shit but i remember even you know coming in there in the late 70s and early 80s and buying some drugs from motherfuckers yeah. on the, some of the russian dudes you know sold coke and smoke and whatever well but, when um i moved here in 99 i came here i came here first i think in uh visited in in 92 or 93 and i had a friend living on rivington in this area it was in 93 even it was completely yeah different. like it was they were like you can't you shouldn't walk down there and well i'll tell you right on this on uh, right on rivington in 1980 when i first went AWOL from the mm -hmm. navy i squat i tried to squat in a, in a in an apartment over there on l ridge and that was all allen street boys and they let me and this dude clean out the whole apartment. What was they, the ethnicity of this this crew? Well, Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans. Yeah. The, the this neighborhood Street, is mostly Puerto Ricans. The Island Ricans. Boys. Okay. And, uh, well, Dominicans too, but the Dominicans yeah. and the Puerto Ricans never never got along. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so these cats, like, were sitting there watching us, and then, like, after we cleaned out the whole place, they just pulled out a shotgun and a pistol, and when I was going back into the building, just put that shit to my head and mm -hmm. said... You know, get, you thanks know, for thanks cleaning for cleaning up. up for the Allen boys. <laughs> now get the fuck out. You know, I do the walking tours still, and it's like, you know, for pe just reminiscing about all, you know, the crazy shit that's gone on mm -hmm. uh, in this neighborhood. You know, but the beauty about it was there was danger, but on a parallel track was all this artistry and like, right. you know, you had bad brains living down here. I mean, I started coming down here. I think. You know, like even '76 that summer, when it was the bicentennial, I remember coming down here to, to getting off 14th Street and copping a bag of weed. And then later on, I ended up being a heroin mule for these junkies in Rockaway and coming down here all the time and going to Max's 
in 77 mm -hmm. and and um cbs and you know and and how do you know i'm i'm turning 54 oh damn That's yeah amazing. so uh you know i mean the fact that i think that was the shit that blew a lot of people away was like that story and then what I'm doing now yeah, yeah, compared it was a, to sure you know, well, they, most like, people their body won't hold on that long if they had that kind of uh, history you know they usually didn't turn it around because you you actually were quite young already when you re relatively young when you decided to completely ditch all that shit yeah and then I had relapses about that. it's been a 30 year struggle with with drugs which is uh, the memoir I'm writing now is is kind of drug based but uh you know, I got, I came out of uh, jail, and even in jail, I would, you know, people were smuggling drugs in, and I was fucking tripping and, and smoking weed and doing, you know, luckily the first, uh, when I tried heroin, I, 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 I didn't like it, so that was, but I did every other drug under the sun, mm -hmm. I was involved in the angel dust trade with dudes that manufactured it. I mean, pills, alcohol, you name it. I was just a fucking trash can of drug abuse. Continued even after I got out of the military. I went right back. I mean, out of lockup, mm -hmm. came right back to the streets, got arrested again, and then they offered me the deal to go into the Navy or go get locked up again. So I chose the Navy. But even in the Navy, um, t they sent me to Norfolk and I was fucking smuggling drugs aboard the ship and like selling acid. The first time I met the Bad Brains, I sold their manager fucking tabs of acid. Well, if you, um, yeah, if you're in that world, like you, you know the signs and you can immediately like suss out people that yeah. are, that are receptive to yeah. that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, and, and meeting the Bad Brains that, like I said, everywhere. They, and I they still turned say, it around. Yeah, because I was so into the music and then in, you know, I, but I actually met Ian and all them cats came down before the Bad Brains. It was like March of 1980, and they came. This was to, in Virginia. Yeah, and they okay. came to Norfolk, Virginia, to the Taj Mahal, and they were, that you was know, it was the Teen Idols and the Untouchables, nice. and all them cats came down, and they the were all flex, straight. Flex your head crew. Yeah, yeah, but before like any of that there stuff was, any was real. The you know, and none of them were drinking, and like you know, it was just bugged out, and they were slam dancing and. I think Henry was there. I'm not sure. I know Ian was there and the rest of them cats. But um, I started, you know, getting into that whole circle. And then when I went AWOL, I lived up here with the Bad Brains. And Jerry Williams, J.W. Lee, who produced the first record, was the real dude. Along with HR, that kind of got to my head and was like, you know, have me go plant-based, stop eating meat, mm. and stop taking drugs. I mean, the first incident I had at 171A, I got stabbed in the shoulder because I fought the hitman. I was on a quaalude and fucking, want, you know, they came in at a Bad Brain show at 171, like pulling knives on people and, and nobody would fight them. They were another gang that was on Avenue A. Oh, they okay. ran that whole, the block it's called, that fucking building, which was the biggest drug spot. In all of New York, in all of the country, actually, okay. uh, on uh, 11th between A and B. So they controlled that whole corner. So they didn't want 171 and the punk rockers hanging out. But that's okay. where the Beastie Boys hung out, like all these cats. But nobody would Challenge fight them. these Puerto Ricans. Yeah. And I said to Jay, I was like, it was Jerry Williams' studio. I go, yo, how come nobody's fighting these fucking people? Let's fuck them up. There's like 40 of us and, 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 and 10 of them. And he was like, yo, they're a drug gang. They'll kill you. Mm -hmm. And then the dude pulled a knife on me outside. And being from D.C., I used to wear the chain mm -hmm. that everybody wore, the bike chain with the quick release. And right. I just got into a knife fight with these cats, lost the chain, and then... Ended up getting stabbed, and that was the turning point after that. Like, you know, they squashed the beef with the hitman and, and let me move into the studio. And that's when I started reading all the philosophy books and stopped eating meat and, and really bonded with HR and, and JW. And that was the turning point where I was like, they were like, yo, you can work with us, but you got to stop taking drugs and drinking. Mm -hmm. And you can smoke ganja, you can't eat meat. and you know, and then I started reading and progressively getting more into yoga, meditation, raw foods. And that was the healing process had begun. 
But what I say, even in this new book, is that, yeah, old wounds, you know, it's like if a bone heals the wrong way, they have to re-break it. So even though I was healing, the shit wasn't, the bone wasn't set properly because I still had all that dark shit hidden in my past, which I never addressed. And then later on, when all that cro mag shit went down with them dudes dogging me out uh, on 87... That was like, you know, I quit the fucking band and then I just spiraled out of control into drugs for Again, almost two I, years. Yeah, okay. that was the, you know, it just took any little event like that for shit to just go off track. And you, yeah. You know, but I mean, sick of it all, I'll tell you, when they saw me in California, dude, I was fucking, I was on a tear, man. And we were like, the Bonnie and Clyde, me and this girl I was dating at the time. <laughs> fucking robbing everybody and robbed the Chili Peppers, fucking merch girl that sold Crystal. I just fucking, and just insane. I had people trying to kill me in New York. Like, it was it was nuts, man. It was May fucking... the bridges that you burned light your way. Yeah. You know, and then I come back to New York and, like, I'm writing about all this shit now and it's like, it's an... In, with, with the angle of addiction being, like, the problem that I never dealt with really for 30 years and why was I an addict and how did I deal with it and and even coming back to New York um, you know after the whole free base and crack and pill and other shit and then I was living in a squat and that that dude chopped up his girlfriend and fed her to the homeless in that building when was this? oh in the the, the late 80s you know when I came back off my drugs so it was like just a uh, I'm looking at it visually, and I'm like, this what, is some, what a somebody in the movie. circle. Yeah, Daniel or... Rakowitz, who I knew, lived in the building above me at 700 East 9th. Okay. They called him, if you Google the East Village Butcher, uh-huh. he comes up, and he's the dude that chopped up his girlfriend and, uh, and, and made soup out of her and fed her to the homeless. And then he copped to, like, doing that That's shit love. to other people. And, like, <laughs> yeah, it was this whole big... But, I mean, just to come out of the fog of addiction and what sure. I was doing for 18 months and come back to that... No, then, that's a fucking dark place. Yeah, for sure. it, it, dude, dude, like, when I came back, like, I'm, I'm writing about it now. Uh, you know, the girl I was on a tear with, her father was very influential in New York and her stepfather was a very big Hollywood producer that he did the Ronald Reagan inaugural ceremony cer- okay. celebrate I mean dude this is a major yeah, he was, uh... and they hired FBI privately to try to find us but I was in all the underground spots mm-hmm. hardcore punk spots so they couldn't find us and they had detectives looking like it, it was just dude it was insane man high speed chases with the cops and fucking just and all the time I'm AWOL and like, you know, okay, just fucking crazy shit, you know? Crazy. So tell me like what, okay, so when you um, started, when, when did you Wasn't start? Wasn't there supposed to be some juice from Juice Press? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have him order some in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Get around, go ahead. I think this is the, uh, I'm, I'm good, man, I'm good, bro. Um... Yeah, I, I still got you on that. Uh, we can we can order some. <laughs> no, we can order right. from somewhere if you it's want. It's all right. Um, so wait, when did you start? Actually, I mean, you, I know you always lifted and stuff. I remember seeing those old photos of the Chromags. You guys were one of the first bands. It was like heavily tattooed at that time. Um, you guys played. I saw you guys play at Ruthie's in Berkeley in 1986 or Ooh, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, remember that? Like, yeah. wasn't it with Fang or something? Probably. I, we were go, driving around in Fang's Fang. Fang played. Every, remember they had that that truck? I don't remember the one that Johnny Puke got center punch they had long long story yeah. but like uh i but well fang ruthie's was there that was like their yeah, spot playing, so yeah, like yeah, they yeah. almost every show every weekend they would play but uh that they might have but i think you guys were playing with motorhead and windy o williams that might have been at the kaiser previously Auditorium. you guys played at the henry j kaiser with them and then you guys did your own show at ruthie's I yeah think, yeah or in the same time yeah frame. it was it was a lot of shows same tour frisco and and GBH was in town at the yeah, same GBH. time. Yeah, GBH. I remember, well, I remember we that. We toured our first tours with them in, like, 84. Okay. Yeah, I was there, uh, because I remember yeah. I had you... Your... That's where we met Garver. Yeah. Garver, we met Garver at the Electric Banana in, in <laughs> fucking Pittsburgh. He was a little kid. He said he was scared of us and uh, shit, like... I'm, like, totally scared of you guys. 
Yeah. <laughs> fucking the electric banana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a fucking... The guy was... I think his name was Johnny. He was an old mob dude from New York. And you would play. And if he didn't like you, he would fucking pull out a gun and tell you to get the... Well, remember... And, and the not guy... pay you. He made his wife... After the Crow Mags played, and uh -huh. we were from New York, and he saw the show, he made his wife make us vegetarian pasta. Oh, so, that's nice. So he loved us. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, remember the guy that owned Ruthie's? Wes? Not really. He was like super, like, uh, old school black dude from Oakland that was just like, he would just, he would just be like smoking weed in his office with all of his other gangster buddies and just looking at these young white kids yeah. like, what the fuck are that's you like, That's doing? like Black Dave just, from A7. Yeah, yeah. He'd just be like, he would be taking the money from the door and going to buy yeah. free base. No. <laughs> he, they, yeah, I, I think this guy was, was pretty crazy mm -hmm. like that also. But it was just always just so funny because there would always be like this one room where it was like all, you know, these people that were like the neighborhood guys in, in Oakland just chilling out and just looking at these kids like what the fuck you? they're like i don't understand what you're doing at all but it's cool yeah, that you yeah. guys are here um so when did you start you'd always lifted and stuff but like when did you start getting i didn't into the really man i didn't even start hitting the weights until about 90 89 when i came off that crack shit i went to gladiators and then i started lifting i remember that place which was the puerto rican gym yeah I, with all the, the only white, paintings inside like yeah, that. yeah i yeah. was the fucking only white dude working out there mm -hmm. and called me white boy john mm -hmm. but i so when i got locked up i boxed and uh and so i i just always did calisthenics heavily and then you know, I started getting into a little bit of martial arts and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and but always doing crazy runs and and biking and and uh, and playing ball in Times Square Park and doing a lot of calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, dips. Yeah, stuff that's not reliant on having to go to a location. Yeah, like, I was like, that, fuck like gyms, stuff really. But that then you can do in the joint, you know, or then, like solitary. Right. So I started really. I always kept fit and i think that's why even when i did my almost you know two year binge of drugs i survived it because like even then i was drinking wheatgrass juice and you know after like a three-day crack binge and fucking you know and so you were smoking crack but you were still staying to your my, ideals of yeah being a vegan. <laughs> absolutely I, I fucking totally was man i was that's like funny. yeah i was like you know some funny shit went on there, but, uh... That's actually more common than people think, because, like, they, people can compartmentalize their brain into, like, one thing. They'll, they'll, they'll allow themselves... I've heard people say stuff like, you know, like, they do tons of... They do cocaine, but it's always, like, really good quality cocaine. Yeah. And yet... And they, they shop at Whole Foods, so somehow it negates yeah. the negative effect. I'm like, all right, we'll just keep, yeah. keep thinking that, too. Well, I can tell you, definitely... Doesn't cause even with all the weed, <laughs> I would get these fucking boils and shit on my oh, back. Sure. Like yeah, fucking, yeah. this shit was just horrible what I was putting into my body, man. But um, you know, yeah, I just always kept fit and you know, um, really started. Uh, gladiators, I, I, I got into adding some weights and and then like you know, years went on with that and started getting into doing triathlons and when was your what was your first triathlon the first triathlon i ever even did uh was 2012 and it was the new oh, york sure. city iron man okay my first triathlon ever was at full iron man and uh, we played the night before in philly this is hardcore in august mm -hmm. of 2012 and i drove back to new york after playing the show on no sleep Took a shower and went and did an Ironman. Took me 13 hours, but I had a broken bone in my foot. What was the uh, like? What was the the time for like regular competitors? What was I like, mean in my time? age group around yeah. that time? 12 okay. hours, you know, that's respectable time. Oh, but I mean, when I came out of the bike, my foot was just. I had to. I spent like 15 minutes in the transition tent just icing down my foot because I had mm. I had a stress fracture. Uh, so I was like, I, I put too much into this. I'm not going to not run. But my run was like four hours and something okay. on the marathon. So it was, you know, but it, the whole thing was to finish. And I did finish 13 hours and uh, 13.20 or something. So it was like, you know, 
wasn't a great time, but I finished and then got the bug, you know, it's like I said, you either, you know, do one and done or fucking you keep going. And now I'm on Iron Man number seven coming up. Uh, That's awesome. May uh, 14th. I got Texas and then I'm racing in Kona this year. I got in the world championships. That's a great... That's and last a, that's, year I qualified in the top 10% of my age group. That's fucking awesome. Uh, with uh, All World Athlete, which is run by Ironman. And, and I was in the top 10% of my age group. I competed in Cozumel, <laughs> Taiwan, and Boulder last year. That's, just a, that's also just... Regardless of your level of competition... You're also just such a great way to travel and yeah. just, you know, like such a, just a great way to, to be able to structure your life around certain events yeah. that are so spiritually and like physically beneficial yeah, man. to you, you know, like that's, it's I've fantastic. I've met some great people in the, tri sure. in the, in the Ironman community. I mean, just like any other sport, you got your douchebags, sure. but, uh, you know, you know, even when I was working out. In crunch and, and get well, into that. Well, that's like, the, that's the most douchebags you'll probably oh, yeah. ever but, see. You know, look anywhere. who I met there, Aaron Drzanowski. Yeah. So like, he ended up being my trainer for Iron Man and getting all my strength and conditioning. And he still works with me. Yeah, like he's helping me heal my injury no, right he's now. The, he's the best, and he's the fucking coolest dude in the world. Hardcore dude from uh, from Syracuse mm -hmm. and into martial arts and just yeah. a fucking he's, righteous, he's an amazing person. Righteous, uh, righteous dude. So you you know the. The triathlon community. I've met some some amazing people traveling uh, all around the globe, and uh, I mean this year because I have Kona, so I'm doing just two local races: one in Texas and one in Northern California, and then Kona in October. But I'm racing for the Children's Tumor Foundation, oh, and that's awesome. I'm raising forty thousand dollars for this family uh, with a three-year-old boy who was affected by uh, cancer, uh, Alexander. And uh, so all the money I raised for Kona, forty thousand. I'm gonna do a couple benefit shows and whatever. It all goes to uh, his family to help with their costs because uh, you know it's it's bankrupted them. You know, sure. And the cost yeah. of cancer treatment is fucking unbelievable. So uh, you know, how do you feel about like alternative um, approaches to that kind of stuff? I mean, I know you're basically like you live holistically yeah. for the most part. I mean, but so, there's certain things like I, I'm I'm on you know like I'm always open to new shit, and I you know definitely like you and I know you and I are kind of see the same way yeah. conspiratorially as far as like well it's a the racket. FDA and everything is yeah. kind of it's like big it's, pharma, it's in their they got interest to keep everybody going, sick. They have a racket going with cancer drugs and yeah. and everything else. Uh, do I think that cancer's, you know, here's, here's the deal with cancer, and I've talked to many doctors, everybody has cancer. You have cancer, I have cancer. It's right just now. in Everyone remission. has cancer it's, cells. Yeah. When it drops below a certain point, a certain level, then they say, you, you know, or goes above a certain mm -hmm. level, your cancer cells, and take over your good cells, then they say, oh, you have cancer. Do I think that there isn't natural, do I believe that there are natural ways to... Uh, to to increase the body's immune system to kill the cancer cells? Of course. Problem is, uh, the FDA and the U.S. and the the FDA is controlled by uh, pharmaceutical companies and with the cost of can You know, I just saw a great thing. Look at every... Cancer's a business. Look at all the technology. When they started with the Wright Brothers, here's a plane made out of wood. Now we're going fucking five times the speed of sound. Yeah. All this, this space That's the technology. only thing that the hasn't... The only thing that hasn't yeah. progressed is curing cancer. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, it's because it's a fucking business. It's a racket. Now they're putting shit in the food, Monsanto and the rest of them, which Monsanto was pharmacia. Mm -hmm. They were originally a pharmaceutical company. Then they branched out into uh, chemical companies. So there's a great documentary called The Idiot Cycle, and I always talk about it because... The Idiot these, Cycle? The Idiot Cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's that a lot of these same companies that make the cancer drugs also own the patents on the stuff that's out there causing the cancer. Yeah. And, well, and RBGH, well, like, um... recumbent bovine growth hormone, is a great yeah. example. Uh, 
what do you call it? Uh, Eli Lilly bought the patent off of Monsanto. Well, guess what? And, and it's been linked to breast cancer, prostate cancer. It's banned in every country around the world. Well, guess who just bought it? The number one producer of cancer drugs, Eli Lilly, owns the patent on mm. recumbent bovine growth hormone, a known car uh, carcinogen. Carcinogen. So it's a lot of racket do. I think there's a lot of hoaxers out there that are fucking selling uh, fucking snake bullshit oil. snake oil, of course. But, you know, if you just look lately, uh, there's been o almost 15 holistic doctors that are curing uh, hepatitis and curing uh, and, and put re uh, HIV in so much remission that it was undetectable by the body about 15 of them have been killed or yeah. missing lately yeah, yeah. Um, you know that's the kind of shit that you know like with this kind of with all this real instances of this happening when you try to bring that up to people like i i live in my own head with this kind of stuff and i try not to because it just usually brings the mood of any yeah. kind of situation yeah. down but I torture myself. Yeah, yeah. I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. I, I torture myself with this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I, will, I just like, so I just try not to, you know, I try to keep to whatever the topic is right. of whatever group of people that I'm, yeah. that I'm hanging out with. But, um, yeah, like if, if you will start, if you start to, you know, you start to think about it and then the more you dig, it's like, it, it's an, un, it's, unending Dude, amount of information hole, it, it's, it's an unending start, amount and so listen you get, man if you can start putting all the fucking links together from everything that's gone on you know yeah like the direct timeline 911 to, to the refugee crisis now to, like everything is like boom 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 it's, all this shit is orchestrated and yeah. like it cracks me to fuck up like, dude, it's about one thing. Fucking yeah. money. Come yeah. on. It's not no fucking conspiracy no. theory. Here's, here's, well, a comp here's companies that made, in 2014, over $770 billion yeah. on their fucking drugs. It's about money. Well, what, the, way I, the way I look, when people try to, like, enter into... Because I think there are people out there that are really genuinely malicious. But also, when the... the what when people are resistant to buying into like the conspiracy type of stuff, I I'm like, listen, man, like, because they don't believe that one person could be that malicious or the, or that one group of people could have those interests. And I'm like, they said that just about like a, 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 a human, a, yeah, a human is an organism, but then a, a, a group of people is also an organism right. that operates in its own best interest. Then a nation is also an organism. So you think this like multi billion dollar corporation isn't going to start like developing its own sort of AI and it's, it's a, the a multi-billion dollar corporation is going to start just doing what's in its best interest, regardless of individual interests of the people. Come on, man. Look so what's it's going just gonna... on since nine eleven. Yeah. I mean, this shit, dude, all I got to say is one thing. Okay. You don't believe nothing else, whatever fucking happened at the Pentagon. Building I got to go to the restroom, but keep going. I'm, look, I'll be right back. look at, look at fucking seven world trade. You know, all you gotta, all you gotta do, is uh, is look at the building coming down. I mean, it's it's a hundred percent, you know, controlled demolition, and then everything that's gone on uh, since then, illegally entering Iraq under the false pretense they were weapons of mass destruction, lying. I mean, you know, the shit. Uh, you know, it's just crazy what's what's uh, what's gone on, and you know, and, and Kissinger said if you control the oil, you control uh, nations. But if you control the food, you control the people, that's right. and that's the next big push that's taking place water. is to control the seeds yeah. and water and yeah. gates. And all of these people are down with this eugenics, reducing the population on Earth. Mm -hmm. And fucking, dude, if you even look at the Zyko shit that's going on, they released in that same area uh, genetically sort of modified GMO fucking mosquitoes, mosquitoes yeah, yeah. to do I something else. And that's where these mosquitoes that are fucking We're killing... Making uh, these pinhead, pinhead babies all over dude, the fucking... it's fucking... Yeah. It's, it's, listen, we are living... Anything that Yuga. you can... We are living in the Kali Yuga, <laughs> the age of quarrel, thus... Yeah. Uh, Days of the, the cheaters Cro and the cheated. Uh... Anything that you can think of, as crazy as it is, mm -hmm. they're thinking of shit ten times worse. Yeah. And 
you know, when they're able to go in there and just fucking slaughter innocent people, and we have yeah. our hand in Syria, just, we're so fucking dirty. Yeah. And, you know, and then the whole thing is... is well, they can't even still, they still cannot even make a case for why we need to depose the leader of Syria. Like, they, they're just like, nah, don't worry about that. No, nah, he's a bad guy. So we somehow are, like, throwing all these billions well, and billions of well, dollars Obama at that shit. Obama just said to back off because Russia is, yeah, like, because fucking... They're, they, they're know, a client state of theirs, which... You know, it's, it's, dude, it's, it's so retarded. grimy now the TPP <laughs> is getting fucking fast-tracked by Obama. And that fucking... is... But the, there's... There's... Uh, there's... Parts of that that just include complete censorship of the internet. Yeah, and yeah, censorship complete. of the internet, and no corporations, whatever they do, held accountable to for anything. the shit that they put yeah. out. And they can sue if you, just like what Monsanto did to Vermont with Bernie Sanders. They fucking sued Vermont because they pushed for, they passed the bill of uh, mandatory labeling for genetically modified organisms, mm -hmm. and then they turn around and fucking sue. It's only going to get worse from yeah. here. Like, the only one, and, and am I saying Bernie Sanders is the answer? No, because it's all politics. But who the fuck was the one years ago, and I think he backed off of it, saying to end the Fed, audit the Ed. He, uh, he did, actually. The Fed. Damn. But he knows that if he keeps talking that rhetoric, he doesn't have a fucking chance. Yeah. So he backed off from that. I think but, him and Trump are both going to get like they're going they're going to both get the popular support on both sides of that, and then they're both going to get completely shut out. Yeah, you know, and they're going to just gonna push be, somebody else. Dude, it's Clinton. I yeah. guarantee you that uh, it's already because well, that that's kind of in the uh, in the the timeline that we're looking at. One of like because as far as politics, like people are like, oh, you know, uh, Troy, you have all these ideas. Theories. It's like the only thing I've ever been wrong about is that I thought Obama would actually change something. Oh hell! That's the no. only one thing I ever Dude, thought if you that, that saw I was the wrong. Fucking about. Obama deception oh, yeah, before he even got in. I was like, yeah. this shit's a hoax. Yeah. He's an, he's an actor playing the president. Like uh, he's a, a junior senator that never did shit from yeah. Chicago. That motherfucker was handpicked. By Bilderberg and yeah. the whole shit. Well, he was Kissinger's, uh, like a, That's like right. a fucking Kissinger, the head of fucking Bilderberg, the yeah. worst fucking human being to ever. Yeah, he worked walk. in the mailroom for him. He Dude. was like, he was like brought up. Listen, to be in they that knew world. they couldn't get away. And his father was somehow like uh, on call to the CIA or something like that. Yeah. Like uh, in the same way, Rubio's father worked for the CIA to some in some capacity. It's like this shit is not just coincidence. Like that stuff doesn't just happen. It's just like this, them saying, like, we couldn't find Bin Laden. It's like, you've never, you cannot become a fucking high-level asset of the CIA and them ever forget where you are. They don't fucking lose And how lose do we even you. know that that was the real Obama sure. and not one of his half-dozen fucking body oh, the, doubles that Laden, the yeah, yeah. killed? Yeah, yeah. Because they well, never nobody, fucking yeah. showed the no, body they, and all this. You know, they showed Saddam Hussein being fucking hung. But they won't show the body of Bin Laden because they don't want to piss off terrorists. Listen, if you believe anything that comes out of these lying motherfuckers' yeah. mouths, then you're a fool, number one. Do do I want to really go down the rabbit hole? Here's my philosophy lately. Because you, like you said, you can go crazy with all this shit. And my whole suggestion to everybody and what I say is, you're, the only way to beat... You're not going to beat tanks. You're not going to beat fucking drones. You're not going to beat these guys militarily. You know where you will prevail? Expanding your consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's the real answer to all of this shit. And, and dealing with things that you can change yourself, like yeah, the way, you, what you put into your body, exactly. the way you know, your, your physical regimen. Yo, you know regimen. what? Your motherfuckers go do your shit, and I'm going to do my shit, and... You know, if you come on my land and do my do some, <laughs> get off my land. I'm just saying, like you know, I agree, man. I'm, I'm pushing agree. to have my organic, you know, farm. Yeah. But even that, look what they managed to no, do. Like no people final... talk about the chemtrail issue, but that shit is to control the mother. They have different chemtrails for different purposes, and and I'm gonna tell you straight up that they fucking bomb over the over sure. the Hawaiian Islands with chemtrail. And everywhere, where, because it's to control the fucking seeds, because yeah. now the Monsanto farmers... Monsanto owns them. Yeah, Monsanto's doing it, because they're, they're spraying out of them planes aluminum, barium, strontium, yeah. 
and it changes the pH of the soil, they Basically, seed the clouds. Basically, it gives you Alzheimer's. Yeah, they well. seed the clouds so that fucking the pH. So the only thing that grows is genetically modified seeds. So they're yeah. saying, how are we going to stop all of these other people that are growing food? Well, guess what? Here's the solution. And they admitted to doing uh, geoengineering. And then and then you get these fucking dummies that are like, yeah, where's your tinfoil fucking hat with your conspiracy theories? Yeah. But it all comes back to money. Yeah. And, and know, control, con, you know, money, control equals control over the market. They don't want you to get off the grid. They yeah. want you to be, they want you just well enough to be able, like George Carlin said. You ever seen that yeah, of quote? They want you... Just well enough to be able to go run the machines and yeah. be stupid. And That's what this government wants. They well, don't want like intelligent. Sur- them, they so. don't want intelligent, free-thinking, no. fucking people. They have no interest in maintaining a really bright society, or uh, you know, like they, they don't. They don't care about that at all. Like they, they're just completely. They push darkness. Want, yeah. Look at the music, Man, which everything. was the only thing in the early '80s where the revolution was coming from. With the punk rock and then the mm. hardcore and all that shit. Look at the, yeah, hip, and the, and the hip-hop, too. Hip-hop, Look, the minute it became anything conscious, they fucking jammed it. They, they held it down. They yeah, fucking yeah. shot Flavor Flav and HR up with some shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, man. And, like, and, and, and uh, you know, anybody that was saying nothing revolutionary... They, like they, sound is the most powerful vibration on this planet. Think about it. People hear words and they change their whole life based sure. on the sound vibrations, whether it's a guru or a health advocate telling you. So it's all communicated through sound. And, you know, look at what's look at the sound vibration that's being put out there now. Fucking Kardashians, like mm. the most dumbed down shit yeah. you could ever fucking imagine. The hip hop, every, everything. But it's it just also, means nothing. It's, it's it's interesting that like men, like we're we're ten years apart, but we're both still outside of the current generation. But you see, they're really pushing so that even men our age somehow are forced to, or not forced to, but like we're made to feel like we should care about that shit. Whereas, like, in the past, like, our fathers don't care about kid shit. Yeah. Whereas, like, children's, children's entertainment is supposed, like, adult, it's for, it's for adults also because the mentality of most adults is like that of a child. Like, they care about pop, pop stars and shit like that. And they care about, like, celebrity magazines or even ma- if people still have magazines. But just celebrity culture is forced on the whole age bracket to where, like, parents are having to, like, have these con- like parents are forced to try to understand what their children are into instead of the children trying to aspire to be adults. Which is the way in previous cultures the children went to the adults. They would try to aspire to, to be enlightenment adults. Yeah. And and questioning what's life about. Now people are thrown into fucking old age homes. Nobody wants to be reminded of the fact that they're gonna fucking die. Well the parents so are we- shamed for not relating to their children, for feeling like they can't relate to their children, so they have to absorb all this fucking mind numbing well, nobody really has answers. That's the other thing. It's like, you know, uh, I mean, t- as far as I I, well, I I see, it's like, you know, there's a big fucking demographic of this country that is just fucking ignorant in a lot of ways, sure. man. Well, parents, and, pa- parents our age are like flying blind yeah. because they had kids at the beginning of the internet and they, like, in the same way, like, I don't like... I feel like I was largely raised on television as the babysitter, you know, because I would be home cutting school, watching television. So MTV and stuff, I was like kind of raised on the early days of MTV. The uh, kid, the parents now, they have kids that they they thought initially that having access to the Internet was going to be really good for their kid. But they end up getting all the wickedness and all of the debauchery and all just the The generous. The subtle messages, the subtle it's so subtle what they're fucking doing. Yeah. It's like it, on a subtle level, it's just polluting. Well, and polluting when, people. See, I come from the generation before MTV, MTV yeah. and television. Like when people communicated with yeah. each other and and via transparent medium, people you got education and learning. Uh, you know, from direct association mm-hmm. with 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 people, and you question and you gain. Life, life uh, experience through that storytelling process, yeah. which is now becoming like such bullshit because now it's like 
everybody's on the internet talking shit. It's just like... And people 10, 15 years ago that used to make fun of fucking... Could people doing that shit They're doing it now yeah. well, Just all, all, online Talking it, it just, shit Like a fucking It's just Well and you know. also You Yeah it's It doesn't Older people Like that Get exposed to social media And stuff like that They usually go full retard Quicker Yeah Because they didn't They weren't raised on it So they don't really understand How it works It's like when your mom Like will leave a a, an email on your Facebook page, <laughs> like mom, no, yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. do that. That's yeah, not how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, so it's like you adults, like they 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 get dragged in, and then they don't get it, and then they end up putting their foot in their mouth, like you see this with like uh, politicians and stuff, like yeah. where they're just getting exposed to this stuff. Um, you know, for for me, I'm like I said, uh, I don't want nothing to do with this Babylon culture. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about. Who they're telling you is important. Sure. I'm still able to judge for myself based on what uh, emanates from these people uh, who I want to pay attention to sure. or even associate with. And 99.999% of it is, is just this complete garbage. fucking trash. And that's why I do what I got a new band now. Uh, we put Blood Clot uh, together and it's... Okay. It's members of, uh, you know, it's, it's Joey Castillo, who was in Queens of the Stone Age, Eagle oh, of Death shit. Metal, playing drums, and Phil from Monster Magnet and Todd Youth. And, oh, and sounds uh, great. You know, yeah, we just got signed, and we'll be signing the contract any day now, and uh, wrote ha- half the album already. And, and uh, you know, I just continue to just put, you know, my art out there and do mm-hmm. stuff that I want to do. Even I'm working on a TV pilot. I got signed with um, um, Howie Tannenbaum, ICM on the West Coast, who handles Vince Gilligan and who did fucking Breaking Bad. Yeah. So if you put the work into the arts, and that's the other thing that you see, this is the microwave society, like Insta fame. Everybody sure. wants to, I'm going to post my video on YouTube and get a fucking million hits and be famous. <laughs> It's all bullshit. Nobody wants to do the work. I started writing in 89. I've yet to sell a screenplay or pilot or anything. I mean, I have a couple of mm. books out, but I just love writing so I continue in the art and the craft and learning uh, what story to tell. And, and uh, you know... Yeah, the, the microwave society, the microwave culture creates a lot of fucking haters and resentment also because then they feel like you know if somebody puts in even one tenth of what you put into it but they didn't they, it didn't they happen quit. to them yet they quit and they just become bitter fucking yeah, haters and, and i've so, seen that shit go on with like dudes who used to be on the scene and you know just became bitter mm-hmm. uh you know but Yo, stop wasting your time writing negative shit and go do some real work sure. and maybe your album will fucking, people will listen to it or whatever that you got, you know, going on in your life. Um, you know, I, I try not to hold any resentment and, and, and just do my thing and associate with good people and, and, and my camp has definitely shrunk over the years and, and, and pulled the reins in on it tighter, but that's just, that's what you have to do. Like, if... You know, in life, to get anywhere, man, you have to really associate with people that are doing positive things and stay away yeah. um, from all the negativity. And that's, you know, so, I, you know, I've I got an agent here in New York for literary. Like, just, uh, it's a whole new group of people that I've been met, meeting as some really dynamite people. Even, like I said, in the Iron Man community, I met so many cool people that... Uh, you know, that compete in Iron Man and then, um, you know, have a lot of other stuff going on in their life. The writing stuff. Yeah. yeah, You know, it's just like, like, am I a professional Iron Man? No, I do the shit. I I do it for fun. I beat myself up, uh, you know, for fun, but I also have all this other stuff going on, which, you know, the writing and playing music and touring with that. And like you said, I get to, you know, I was in Taiwan uh, last year in April, fucking, That's you know, racing. And, and so I get, you know, I get to travel around a lot and meet a lot of different people. And, and it just shows you the power of the media, too, because you know what? I met this kid in Taiwan when I went to the expo because over there it was all, 
Japanese and like they couldn't believe I flew all the way from yeah, New York. Yeah. East like, Asian people. Yeah, it was like Chinese, Taiwan. So I walked into the expo and all the companies were selling their shit and this Japanese kid tattooed worked for this one company. <laughs> and he's he was like, so stoked. Oh, John Joseph. Oh, John Joseph. He's like bugging out, whatever. <laughs> but I said, yo, let me ask you something. What's going on with that Fukushima shit? He's like, it is still leaking, but yeah, the Japanese uh, press, like anybody that yeah. tries to do a thing on it, they put him in fucking jail. Yeah. They lock him up or they disappear. That's yeah, like a national disgrace. Dude, like, it's they, like yeah. that shit's still leaking into the, And that just shows you everybody's worried about who fucking Chloe uh, Kardashian's fucking mm -hmm. now. But meanwhile, Fukushima's still leaking into yeah. the motherfucking, you know. Core of the earth. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Nobody, yeah, you know, and, and look what's going on with the planet, man. The fishing, overfishing of the oceans and destruction of the land. And uh -huh. fucking, it's just smoke screens, man. Like, it's some really crazy motherfuckers that are in well, charge of this it's, planet. Well, it's one of these things where, you know, everybody's data, seem, you know, like there's all these di differing data. But it's inevitable that there's going to come a time when it's it's like, okay, we're on the verge of it not becoming inhabitable. Like, certain areas of the world are not going to become yeah, it's inhabitable. Yeah, that's already happening. There's already mm -hmm. places that are so contaminated yeah. by what man has done. Yeah. You know, go to Chernobyl. Like, look at this whole area in Japan. Yeah. It's becoming a fucking ghost town. Yeah. And this shit's still leaking. They're dumping fucking seawater into it to cool, you know... It's just insane, man, and, and what's going on in the Middle East. I mean, you know, I have friends that are in the military, and, and it's like, I can't, they're just doing their fucking job, but the people that are sending them there and flying the fucking drones and dropping carpet bombing and, and doing all the other shit, it's just insane. Well, it's it's a tough, it's a, like, it's a tough, it, it's tough, people have a hard time separating certain things. Because if you're, you say like, no, we shouldn't be over there, then they're like, oh, are you pro terrorism? I'm like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, yeah. this, this, and, and I like, I don't, I don't follow any, any other kind of like thought process other than my own. Right. And that it, it's like, I don't, I don't even really like. If you want to convert them to democracy or something, there's there's way better ways to do it than this. Oh yeah, because 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 the democracy in Iraq yeah, really went well. But, but I yeah, but like you know, I think there's the way that you're doing it is fucking even if it's necessary or if they even want it. You know, that's another question. Like, who knows if certain parts of the world need to. Certain people, not everybody thinks the same, and not everybody wants the same thing out of life, and. In a lot of those places, that was working fine for them. And who the fuck are we to push to, out yeah. shit on anybody else? Yeah. That's what the fucking Nazis yeah. did. Well, and also, you know, you know, we can we have our society here, and we choose to live this way here. But pushing our shit on somewhere else, you know, if somebody comes to this country, they can't bring that shit with them. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if you want to live that way in Afghanistan, as long as you're not fucking, you know, as long as the, you're not killing tons of women and shit like that, and then that becomes an issue. But at the same time, it's like if you just want to live in a way, wow. like a tribal, in the way that people in tribes have lived for fucking thousands of years, hey man, go ahead. Yeah, but you know, they pick and choose who the fuck they want oh, to go after too, because look what's going on in Africa. Sa Saudi Arabia. You know, Saudi, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the most corrupt place on the fucking, fucking planet. Fucking, they just beheaded like 20 people, dude. Dude, they like, fucking, they, I saw a video where they beheaded a Filipino lady in a fucking parking lot of a shopping mall because she was like some worker that was just kind of haphazardly had her thing on. And it's like this fucking shit is really going on and you're you have the fucking nerve well, to talk about fucking Syria. And look who who, who look who left after 9/11 on all the fucking private jets. Yeah. The fucking Saudis. Saudis. Bin Laden's family was flown the fuck out of the states yeah. like and, and just completely and it was in the it was even in it made it into the Michael Moore movie. And nobody even talked about it after that. So people people don't want to they don't want to see like so that's, they don't. So you and know it, is, it was it so much pro American bullshit yeah. after that thing, and people were so blinded by it 
that they they did they they failed to fucking even look at the and that's why the first time when I saw anything because I was here in New York when mm-hmm. that sure. shit I, I, I was here during that. Shit. I was watching it on the, on the roof of my building and and then it wasn't like maybe a couple of weeks later I thought too yeah them motherfuckers came and did that shit and yeah. then like I saw the more find you... the Boeing yeah. the French fucking yeah. little thing that came out like how does a fucking Playing that size fit into this. Little I came room. out of that situation super rah rah, like fuck that, like let's let's do it. Right. And then, and then the more you kind of look into it, you're like, like oh, you kinda, oh, and then you start going like, flip. Seven World Trade, yeah. fucking, and they say yeah, it's a natural. Pull the, pull the building. Pull it, Silverstein. Yeah, nobody wants to look at all that shit, man. And the insurance policy that was taken out just like a month before nine yeah. eleven. For planes yeah. hitting the buildings. I mean, it's just, dude. All right, so let's not go crazy. Let's see. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> yeah. So, anything else you want to talk about? We're going on an hour here. Let's put a bookmark in it and, like, be sure to do this again. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I got these races coming up. If anybody wants to uh, get, get all the information where me, people yeah, can see your stuff. Uh, on Twitter, at JJ Cromag. But Instagram, I have uh, the link for the charity. If anybody would like to donate, uh, it's John Joseph Cromag, all one word, uh, on on Instagram. And, uh, you know, I got another book coming this year. I got working on a couple of TV projects, uh, a film at some point. I want to do this punk rock comedy thing with my boy out west. So, um, you know, another film. So, you know, I'm keeping busy. I'm training. Uh, I turn 54 uh, soon. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show if you just, you know, keep keep uh, a little bit of your, your ass in the gym or working out or doing something and eating right and, you know, turn off the goddamn fucking television. You focus on the shit that you can change. Yeah, you which is you yourself. Lo- you won't lose your shit. And, 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 you know, and expand your consciousness. That's really the unlimited uh thing that we are in possession of and the one thing that they could never you know like bob marley said have no fear for atomic energy and you know it's like they they want you to be in fear because that's how you're easily controlled and give up your liberties well when when you have somebody terrified you can predict their response yeah you can completely predict yeah. the way that they're going to respond like i guarantee you in the next like year we're going to see another fucking attack come down oh, for sure because i'm sure you know it's just they have to revamp they, they, and they gotta they gotta they gotta also keep them coming to to get your your focus off the last one because if you look too deep into that you'll see yeah. all the fucking lies and it, bullshit it, so just like, nah, like, don't is, look over there. Look over here. What does a magician do? Yeah, distraction. You know, he distracts yeah. you with something yeah. in his right hand because yeah. what's really going on is in the left yeah, hand. And that's sure. what these motherfuckers are really, you know, all about. That's why, you know, it's important. That's why I chant every day and, and uh, you know, do what I do and, and, and try to help other people uh, you know, that want to be helped. I'm not mm-hmm. no preacher. If it, sure. I'm not going to go out there and start fucking telling people how to do their shit. But if someone writes me or whatever, which I, you know, or you 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 respond, you you try to yeah, I try to put to them in the right direction to to, to get for them to do the research. Okay, you want to know about this? Okay, uh, diet or, or yoga or whatever. I, I point them in the direction, man, and go on your search. That's what I did. Right. You know and. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing, cause like look at that whole shit that went down in, in in the Hare Krishna part of the book too, man. It's like there's a lot of hustlers out yeah. there, con artists that are getting involved with organized religion, and fuck oh, for shit sure. up like crazy, sure. man. And, and and you know you have to watch, man. You have to be so fucking diligent well, in this day I... and age, man. Yeah, even that's... like people you're calling your friends, man. You know, it's like part of my philosophy is to trust no one and that doesn't mean to not show trust but that means don't put your trust in one you know right. any any don't 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 ever like any person that steps to you or any kind of philosophy that claims that they know everything or that all you have to do is is use them as the resource right. gonna, it, that's well, going to steer you in the wrong direction and you know direction. what that's what Prabhupada even said and that's who I follow because 
you know, he translated the Vedas, which are millions of mm -hmm. years old, yeah. into English. But he said, this isn't the only way. Every yeah. path, it gets you to the same goal. But you have to be the real de de devotee of that path, whether it's Buddhism or whatever it well, is. Well, Krishna adopts uh, other godheads from other religions and stuff like that into that pantheon. Like, I know that, uh, like, you know, all the incarnations, it's like, it's not just from that religion yeah Bo you know? well buddha buddhist buddha people don't even know they think he's in china somewhere so no, fat in he was in india mm -hmm. you know but Prabhupada was not sectarian you know and, and that's the religion really we should, have a, we should have a whole this. show to talk about this because yeah. i'm a huge uh i still huge no, student I know, of history I know you do. We, we but do. uh like the uh you know the whole like indo-aryan and not Aryan, like Aryan nation, but like uh, northern, well, northern, sent, northern all, Indian. Hitler, all Hitler, that time period. People don't know that the Vedas are so scientific. Mm -hmm. They even talk about the Brahmastra weapon, which was the nuclear, nuclear bomb. Weapon. Uh, Hitler sent the the uh, the Nazi his Nazi um, what was it the SS, SS all over India to study the Vedas. That's where they took the the, the to look for the magic energy. The, the Hindu symbol. Mm. was turned sideways yeah. and they made it a swat sticker so the Aryan nation yeah. he, he used that what is the Aryan Aryan nation is 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 a nation in, in according to the Sanskrit definition means a uh, a civilization based on people uh, expanding their consciousness but the, also it means nobility Aryan yeah. means like the noble yeah. people which the the indo-aryan people the people that are scientifically classified as the Indo-Aryans were the people from Central Asia that populated down south into India. And then the Sanskrit language, which traveled up through all the way to Japan. Yeah. You know, through, that is based on the, the initial Indo-Aryan. the Himalayas yeah. into Tibet first. And the, the caste system is also from the Indo-Aryans, which Japanese people even have a, this, a similar version of the same caste system, well, the which caste, was in the India. the caste came in the last... Uh, at the at, in the Kali Yuga, which is the mm -hmm. age we're in, but previous to that, it was the Van Ashram Dharma. There was no, there was no caste system saying like if you're born into the family yeah, the of a Brahmin, forever. you're a Brahmin, and all this. That's all bullshit. That's mm -hmm. like that's like Kali well, that's, Yuga. Uh, Buddhism was a, a rebellion yeah. against that as well. Yeah, that's what Buddha said. Don't follow yeah. any of this. Yeah, Just follow a... me. But in actuality, he was an incarnation of of Krishna. Gotcha. So. You know, yeah, there's a lot of in intense... Let's do a stuff. show just about this also in the future. I'm but not, any, anything else Hopefully you want? Any... <laughs> yeah, just uh, like I said, um, check for the new albums coming, Blood Excellent. Clot. And my name is not Blood Clot, just so everyone knows. <laughs> cause, like, I want to tell you this. So that was a, a band started in the, in, the, in 81. Okay. In 80, we were the roadies for the Bad Brain. So, you know, when something was awry and fucked up the bad brains were like got a blood clot fix the blood clot and blood clot babylon and this is a blood clot so we called ourselves blood clot then it became john from blood clot gotcha. john blood clot blood clot but no, it gotcha. came from the band so we're taking the name we're going to put out this record and it'll be coming out probably Excellent. in the fall really good stuff and we'll be touring and uh like i said i got another book coming based on the whole addiction thing and how PMA was helped me big time to, to mm -hmm. kick the addiction and you know I'm probably going to do a cookbook this year I got a lot oh, of plans awesome. man yeah so, man well it was yeah. this is the first show I've done in a year so it, it's this is a great but I don't know how that. many people you got but listen if everyone comes on that website that I post yeah. and donates 10 20 30 yeah. dollars to help G this kid. Give, give us a uh, give us um another just shout that out one more time yeah you just we'll go it. on my instagram page or hit me up i'll always be posting the link at jj Cromag on twitter or john joseph Cromag one word on instagram the link is posted there for the children's tumor foundation it goes to a little boy suffering with cancer <laughs> He's my NF hero, and uh, you can read his whole story, and that's who I'm racing Kona for. And I'm trying to raise $40,000 to help his family pay their bills this year. And anybody, what you know, if we get 
you know, 500 people give 20 bucks, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's 10 Gs. That'd be awesome. Well, so whatever. Every little bit helps. So. All right. So, and I'll, I'll make sure all of that is posted in the uh, thank you, know, you. On, on the on the link as well. All right, man. Well, cool, thank you man. so much Yo, for coming Troy, on, Big respect to you. <laughs> all right, brother. I remember the first time I met your ass, everybody was like, that dude's fucking badass. Well, yeah, and I know you've been training in the <laughs> arts for years and... You know, we know a lot of the same people, but it was yeah. an honor to get it's, on It's on been an podcast. honor to have you on, dude. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Thank you so much. Now we're friends. Now we're buddies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right peace. Peace.